Happy evening aspirants, welcome you to the Shankar Ace Academy's Hindu News Analysis for the date 26th of September 2022. Displayed here are a list of articles that we are going to discuss today, you can go through it. Now let's start our discussion. Have a look at this news article. This news article speaks about the Attorney General of India. This is in news because a senior advocate declined the offer from the Union Government to be the next Attorney General of India. This is the crux of the news article given here. Let's take this as an opportunity to learn about Attorney General of India. See, the Attorney General of India is a part of the Union Executive and he is the highest law officer in the country. Note that the provisions regarding Office of the Attorney General of India is provided in Article 76 of the Indian Constitution. Now coming to the appointment, see the Attorney General is appointed by the President of India on the advice of the Union Government. Note that she or he must be a person who is qualified to be appointed as a Judge of the Supreme Court. Now we will see what are all the qualifications required to become Supreme Court Judge. First qualification is she or he must be a citizen of India. Second, she or he must have been a judge of some high court for 5 years or an advocate of some high court for 10 years or an eminent jurist in the opinion of the president. Now talking about term and remuneration, see the Attorney General of India shall hold office during the pleasure of the president and Attorney General shall receive such remuneration as the president may determine time to time. Now let's see some of the functions of Attorney General. See his foremost duty is to give advice to the government of India on such legal matters referred by the president. Then to perform such other duties of a legal character referred or assigned to him or her by the president. Third duty is to discharge the functions conferred on him by or under this constitution or any other law for the time being in force. Now talking about the rights of the Attorney General. See the Attorney General shall have right of audience in all courts in the territory of India. Then the Attorney General of India shall have the right to speak in both the houses of parliament and he or she also take part in the proceedings of both the houses of the parliament. Here you also note that he or she may take part in the proceedings even in a joint sitting of the houses and he also take part in any committee of the parliament. During all these she or he may be named a member of that house. But note that she or he shall not be entitled to vote. Then his or her appearances in private cases will be granted in the rarest of the rare occasions. But note that she or he should not advise or hold a brief against the government of India. That's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw about Attorney General, then the appointment, functions and finally the rights of the Attorney General. With these key points in mind, now let's move on to the next news article discussion. Have a look at this news article. This news article talks about United Nations Security Council. This is a news because the external affairs minister of India in a press note said this is not the right time to comment on the permanent membership of India in the United Nations Security Council. He also said that countries like USA and Russia are showing support for India's permanent membership in United Nations Security Council. But the question is remaining open regarding the grant of veto power to India if India joins as a permanent member. And he also advocated for reform in United Nations Security Council. So this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let's learn about United Nations Security Council in detail. See, the United Nations Charter of 1945 established the United Nations Security Council. It is one of the six main organs of United Nations. The other five organs include the United Nations General Assembly, the Economic and Social Council, the Trusteeship Council, the Secretariat and International Court of Justice. Except International Court of Justice, the other five organs are headquartered in New York City. Note that the International Court of Justice is located at The Hague in the Netherlands. The primary responsibility of the United Nations is to maintain international peace and security. Now talking about the membership, the United Nations Security Council is composed of 15 members. Each member has one vote. These 15 members include 5 permanent members and 10 non-permanent members. 5 permanent members include China, France, Russia, the United Kingdom and the United States which are collectively known as P5. Also know that any one of them can veto a resolution. That is if any one of the 5 permanent members cast a negative vote in the 15 member security council then the resolution or decision would not be approved. Now coming to the non-permanent members they are elected for 2 year term by the general assembly. These non-permanent members do not enjoy veto power. Note that India is currently one of the non-permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. Also know that non-permanent members of the council are elected on a defined pattern. That is, five is elected from African and Asian states, then one from Eastern European states and two each from Latin American states and Western European states. Note that the council's presidency rotates on a monthly basis among its 15 members. 
which is following the english alphabetical order of the member states names a representative of each of its members must be present at all times at united nations headquarters so that the council can meet at any time as the need arises now we will have a brief look at its functions and powers the foremost function is to maintain international peace and security this is in accordance with the principles and purposes of the united nations then the next function is to investigate any dispute or situation which might lead to international friction then the next function is to investigate any dispute or situation which might lead to international friction and to recommend methods of adjusting such disputes or the terms of settlement then to formulate plans for the establishment of a system to regulate armaments then the other function is to determine the existence of a threat to the peace or act of aggression and to recommend what action should be taken then united nations security council can also call members to apply economic sanctions and other measures without involving the use of force note that this is to prevent or stop aggression then it has the power to take military action against an aggressor then it has the power to recommend the admission of new members and it also exercises the trusteeship functions of the united nations in strategic areas and along with the united nations general assembly the united nations security council involves in the process of elections of the judges of international court of justice that's all regarding united nations security council in this discussion we saw about united nations security council about the permanent and non permanent members and some of the functions of the united nations security council with these key points in mind now let's move on to the next news article discussion let's take up this text and context article see this article talks about indian monsoon and it is in news because the indian meteorological department has announced that the monsoon has begun to retreat from rajasthan so in this context let us go through what is monsoon what is monsoon withdrawal and then we also see some of the important points mentioned in the news article before getting into discussion the syllabus relevant to this news article is given here you can go through it now let's start with what is monsoon see the word monsoon is derived from the arabic word mausim which literally means season and monsoon also refers to the seasonal reversal in the wind direction during a year in other words the monsoon is a sea breeze that has consistently landed in the indian subcontinent remember it is a double system of seasonal winds that is they flow from sea to land during the summer and from land to sea during winter so whenever they flow from sea to land during the summer we call it as southwest monsoon though its official onset date over kerala is june 1 it enters mainland india between the last week of may and the first week of june and they last from june to september indian meteorological department counts this rainfall from june 1 and september 30 alone as monsoon rainfall does that mean the monsoon system ceases to pour rain over india from october 1 really not in fact monsoon related rain can continue well into the first four night of october and only retreats from india by late october the southwest monsoon winds will be replaced by the retreating or northeast monsoon in november so whenever monsoon flow from land to sea during winter we call it as northeast monsoon this phase lasts from october to december and it gives heavy rainfall in tamil nadu andhra pradesh and north interior karnataka now both the monsoons have their own conditions for formation and retreating we will see them one by one first we will see about southwest monsoon the factors that favor southwest monsoon are first is the differential heating and cooling of land and water here differential heating refers to the difference in how land and water surfaces absorb heat see the differential heating creates low pressure on the land mass of india while the seas around india experience comparatively high pressure then second is the shift of the position of intertropical convergence zone in summer this intensifies the heating of the land and helps in creating low pressure thirdly the presence of high pressure area on the east of madagascar approximately at 20 degree south over the indian ocean since the air sinks they move wind forward rigorously so the intensity and position of the high pressure areas affects the indian monsoon and most importantly see during summer the tibetan plateau gets intensely heated up this results in strong vertical air currents and the formation of low pressure over the plateau at 9 km above sea level so this is the main factor for attracting the southwest winds from indian ocean and finally the movement of the westerly jet stream it moves to the north of the himalayas and the presence of the tropical easterly jet stream over the indian peninsula during summer also favors indian monsoon here jet streams are nothing but they are the bands of strong wind that generally blow from west to east all across the globe they are relatively narrow bands of strong wind in the upper levels of atmosphere so these are all the conditions that favor southwest monsoon winds apart from these few factors like presence of la nina and past indian ocean dipole will also intensify the precipitation level 
So what is La Nina? See, during La Nina, the water temperature in the eastern Pacific gets colder than normal. As a result of this, there is a strong high pressure over the eastern equatorial Pacific. And the trade winds move towards low pressure area in the western Pacific and Asia. So, this causes drought in Peru and Ecuador. But it causes heavy floods in Australia, the Somalian coast and it gives good monsoon rains in India. So, La Nina is actually beneficial for the Indian monsoon. The opposite to this condition is El Nino. During the El Nino, Peruvian cold current becomes warmer. This causes heavy rains in Peru and gives a normal monsoon rains in the Indian subcontinent. The larger the temperature and pressure difference, the larger will be the rainfall shortage in India. Generally, El Nino and La Nina occur every 4 to 5 years. El Nino is more frequent than La Nina. Typically, the episodes last for 9 to 12 months. So, this is about La Nina. Then, talking about past to Indian Ocean Dipole. See, in physics, a dipole is a pair of equal and oppositely charged or magnetic poles separated by a distance. Likewise, Indian Ocean Dipole is defined by the difference in sea surface temperature between two areas. Here we are talking about Arabian Sea which is on the western side of India and the Bay of Bengal which is on the eastern side of India. Whenever Arabian Sea has warmer sea surface temperature when compared to Bay of Bengal, we call it as positive Indian Ocean Dipole. And note that negative Indian Ocean Dipole is opposite of positive Indian Ocean Dipole. Now considering this year, monsoon rainfall in India has been surplus by about 7%. Especially Central and South India saw a sharp surge in rainfall. Rains in Central India were surplus by about 20% and in Southern India by about 25%. We could even witness several instances of flooding in Kerala, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh. While this is happening on one hand, on the other hand, large parts of UP, Bihar, Odisha have seen large deficits. The east and northeastern India have reported a 70% shortfall and the northwest reported a 2% shortfall. So what is the reason for this? The answer for this condition is a phenomenon called triple dip La Nina. What is that? It is nothing but the extended spell of the La Nina. See, whenever La Nina lasts across the winter seasons in the northern hemisphere, it is called triple dip. Or in other words, La Nina phenomenon will be there in the Pacific Ocean for a third consecutive year. This phenomenon has occurred only third time since 1950. And this is why for the third year in a row, India is seeing surplus rain in September during which the monsoon retreats. So having seen about southwest monsoon, now let's see the conditions that favor northeast monsoon. See during October to November, with the apparent movement of the sun towards the south, the low pressure trough over the northern plains becomes weaker. This is gradually replaced by high pressure system. So the southwest monsoon winds become weak and start withdrawing gradually. By the beginning of October, the monsoon withdraws from the northern plains and the low pressure conditions over northwestern India get transferred to the Bay of Bengal by early November. This shift is associated with the occurrence of cyclonic depressions which originate over the Andaman Sea. These cyclones generally cross eastern coasts of India will cause heavy and widespread rain. So this is how monsoon retreats and give rainfall to the coast of Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh and North Interior Karnataka. Remember the bulk of the rainfall of the Coromandel coast is derived from depressions and cyclones. That's all about this discussion. In this discussion we saw about the Indian monsoon, then about the southwest and northeast monsoon, La Nina, past to Indian Ocean Dipole and triple dip La Nina. So with these key points, now let's move on to the next news article discussion. Let's take up this news article. This news article talks about H1N1 influenza. This is in news because a 53 year old woman died because of the H1N1 influenza virus. So in this context, let's learn about the influenza virus, its types, then about the transmission, symptoms and treatment of the disease caused by influenza virus. First of all, we have to know what is influenza. See, influenza is a contagious respiratory illness caused by the influenza viruses that infect the nose, throat and lungs. Know that there are four types of influenza which are influenza viruses A, B, C and D. See, influenza A viruses are divided into subtypes based on two proteins on the surface of the virus that is hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. In this regard, there are 18 different hemagglutinin subtypes and 11 different neuraminidase subtypes that are H1 to H18 and N1 to N11 respectively. See this picture for better understanding. Know that influenza A subtypes can further broken down into different genetic clades and subclades that is into groups and subgroups respectively. Thus, influenza viruses are subdivided based on the similarity of their gene sequences. This allows the flu exports to track the proportion of the viruses from different clades in circulation. 
and the subtypes of influenza a viruses that routinely circulate in people include a h1n1 and a h3n2 also note that influenza a viruses are the only influenza viruses known to cause flu pandemics that is global epidemics of flu disease here we should also know that a pandemic can occur when a new and very different influenza a virus emerges that both infects people and has the ability to spread efficiently between people now talking about influenza b viruses they are not divided into subgroups instead they are further classified into two lineages that is b yamagata and b victoria similar to influenza a viruses influenza b viruses can also further classified into specific clades and subclades see both human influenza a and b viruses can cause seasonal epidemics of disease usually in every winter season now talking about influenza type c infections they generally cause mild illness and are not thought to cause human flu epidemics and finally influenza d viruses primarily affect cattle and are not known to infect or cause illness in people so this is all about the types now let's see how it spreads see most experts believe that the flu virus is spread mainly by tiny droplets when the people with flu cough sneeze or talk these droplets can land in the mouth or noses of a people who are nearby then a person touching a surface or object that has flu virus on it and then touching their own mouth nose or possibly their eyes can also cause infection now let's see what are all the symptoms see influenza can cause mild to severe illness and at times can lead to death flu symptoms usually come suddenly infected person suffers from fever cough sore throat runny or stuffy nose then with muscle or body aches headaches etc people who have flu often feel some or all of these symptoms some people may have vomiting and diarrhea though this is more common in children than adults now talking about the treatment treatment focuses on relieving symptoms of influenza such as fever and patients at high risk should be treated with antivirals in addition to symptomatic treatment as soon as possible then to prevent ourselves from the disease it is good to go with vaccination see influenza vaccine is most effective when the virus circulating in our body are well matched with the viruses contained in vaccines and due to the constant evolving nature of influenza viruses the world health organization global influenza surveillance and response system and world health organization collaborating centers continuously monitoring the influenza viruses circulating in humans so this is to update the composition of influenza vaccines twice a year other than vaccination regular hand washing then good respiratory hygiene yearly self isolation of those feeling unwell then avoiding close contact with sick people and avoiding touching one's eyes nose or mouth can prevent one from getting infected with this influenza that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about influenza virus its transmission symptoms and treatment of the disease with these points in mind now let's move on to the next part of the news article discussion that is to discuss the preliminary practice questions now look at this first question consider the following statements regarding united nations security council let's take a first statement all non permanent members of united nations security council has the right to vote see united nations security council has 15 members and to be clear each member of the security council has one vote and note that decision of the security council on matters are made by an affirmative vote of nine members this includes the concurrent vote of five permanent members and an important point is that a negative vote from one of the five members blocks the passage of resolution so statement one is correct now coming to the second statement india is currently a non permanent member of the united nations security council yes india is a non permanent member of united nations security council and note that india is also trying to become the permanent member with veto power so statement 2 is also correct so here the question asks for correct statement so the answer for the question is option c both 1 and 2 now coming to the second question consider the following statements regarding influenza let's take a first statement influenza is a flu caused by fungi here this statement is incorrect because as we all know the influenza is caused by influenza virus so statement 1 is incorrect coming to the statement 2 influenza d infects only human beings this is also incorrect because as we saw in discussion influenza d infects only cattle and not human beings so statement 2 is also incorrect here the question asks for correct statement So the correct answer for the question is option D neither one nor two I will post this quiz question in a community section please try to answer the question Displayed here is the main question for you today interested aspirants can write the answer and post it in a comment section Now we have come to the end of the video if you like the analysis like comment and share it with your friends 
and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy's YouTube channel. Thank you.